So we'll do some checks on the car, um, go through some setup procedures and I'll mainly focus on the vacuum system. So first off you want to start with your throttle body and get it adjusted right. Now throttle body's got two arms on this, your main arm and you've got this other arm section here which moves independently of the lower part. Now this bit here is the lower part which goes on the stop. So what you want to do is undo that nut, little tiny little nut, and get the screw right out. Now allow the throttle body to close naturally so that arm, the little arm there, is not touching of that nut. Now when it's in that position, you want to get a bit of paper, any A4 paper between this arm and the screw, and screw the screw in till it just makes contact, and then do the whole screw 360 degrees or just one full turn and then nip that nut up. And that's fine. And once that's there, you then need to adjust the switch. Now this is a little micro switch. Now the switch should, I don't know if you can hear that ticking. So what you want, you want a throttle to close. So that's there. The throttle close is closed now when you've got that movement in the switch. So that movement there is what you want, forcibly, not too much, just to hold that switch on. So when the throttle closes, that switch is closed. And when you open the throttle, activates that switch. So that's how you set that up. Now, vacuum system. So if we start on this point here, I'll put a diagram up so it's a bit easier to see. So we've got, you start this one, this is a simple one. This is your one-way valve. It goes that side to your brake servo and this side to your back of inlet, inlet manifold just here. Now you've got one takeoff on this side of it. This wide plastic tube goes up here into the rain tray and back through that and plugs on the back of the speedo, which is for your MFA um, vacuum input. Now the next one is the ECU. Now it comes off the ECU there, again back through and into here and goes into this side. Now it goes into this T-piece. So that's from the ECU into a T-piece and goes on the yellow portion um, of that one-way valve. So you've got a bit of tube, T-piece, that goes off to the ECU. And this bit goes off, doesn't go to the throttle body, it goes off to the back of your airbox. So I've yet to replace these pipes yet, um, as I need to replace them. So what I'll do is just pop this pipe out of the way. Get that one out of the way. Then we can see better. So, excuse the dust, it does need to damn, damn good clean. So, again, this is just temporary hoses, so that pipe comes down to here. Again, goes to a T piece, one bit comes off onto this, and then another bit goes onto this. Now, this is your overrun um, valve, which what happens is when you're at high revs and you let the throttle off, this valve diverts air to so your your revs don't suddenly plummet down, it's a nice gradual slowdown. And this is the cold enrichment valve. So electrical plugs, simple vacuums on there. I'll get off a lot of nice new tubes and everything. So again, one on there, T piece. Other side of that T piece goes to that valve. That bit again goes back round to the side of that and up to the ECU. And that is your vacuums. Now there's not a lot of vacuums on this car, they're your main ones. And the other bits you want to look for is vacuum leaks. So the next bit you've got is this pole, this tube across here, off onto there, there, and into there. Now these should have clips on, they will have clips on once I get them, they need to be tight. Obviously it draws air across for the idle, the idle valve, but they still need to be tight because the system's designed to work with X amount of air. If it's getting too much air in, start having problems. Now remember from the previous video I had issues with the air meter with my mod modified one. The air meter needs to get perfect suction from there to get the engine to work. If it sucks any air in from anywhere else, that's when you're going to have problems. Again, we've got a throttle adjust oh, in there, which is got your O-ring. Pull it out, make sure it's not got a flat surface on it. it should be nice and round. Um, cheap enough just to get a box of them from your local screw fix or tool station or whatever. And just change it over. And then the next we've got, the other vacuum side, is you've got, on the 16 valve, you've got this tube here which comes off that Y junction, onto there, off, off the bottom of your idle valve, down and onto your warmer regulator. Now this is your fuel enrichment, so when 
it has a vacuum source there when you're nailing it, sticking your foot down. It causes vacuum in there and moves the diaphragm to give a bit more fuel enrichment. So again, this pipe makes sure it's all good condition. Um, that'll have some clips on it when I get them. Again, it's just in at the moment, but it's loose. I can easily pull it out. It's not tight in there. So you want a nice clip on there to make sure you've got a good seal on it. Idle valve, known for problems. It's an old part. You can get them new. This is the original one. All you want to do, turn the ignition on. This should buzz. Quite a good solid buzz. As long as it's doing that, that's your electrical side. Is mainly there. You could go through testing it, which you are um, tests to do, but as long as you're getting a good solid buzz in it, nine times in a ton of ten, it's going to work. What you can do if it's you want to just clean it out because it's just a shuttle valve kind of thing inside, get it in some petrol um, or some of the cleaners. Obviously, be careful with it, is flammable liquid you're playing with, clean it out inside, put it back on. So, the vacuum system again, pretty simple, but it's very important. Those it's pennies, well, a couple of quid, you're probably looking at 10 quid to replace them all. Get them changed, even the tubes. I'm going to change the tube as well, because they could have a pin prick in it somewhere. Maybe unlikely, but, you know, might as well just change it, get it all clean, all done in there. Again, this one's bent over quite a bit, and the one on the ECU is not very strong. It's bent over a bit, so it could be sucking air in somewhere. So just get those done. That's one thing done I've forgotten about. Again, I'll put the diagram up at the end. It's pretty simple. It goes from... Again, to reiterate, ECU down to a T-piece. T-piece goes onto the yellow side of the bracket plate vacuum. That side goes off down to there, to another T-piece, into one valve and into the other one. And then the other takeoff on the other side of the brake server valve goes off to your MFA stalks. Again, your, MFA, your clocks, if you want to change the vacuum in there, it's not hard to get out, but it's a bit awkward. Um, just have, obviously you can do all this, but if you've got an air leak in your clocks, you can have an air leak there. So change it all. So it's all done once and forgotten about. So, just a quick one on the uh, vacuum system. We're just going over tidying some bits and bobs. Um, getting the fuel lines tidied up, getting all the pipes straight. Clips I need, bits and bobs, coolant lines, tinkering little things. Warm the regulator's gone back on there. Um, again, I'll just uh, wait for the car to run up. Once I've got a fan in it, I can just double check the temperature on it. Um, and then that, if that needs any more adjustment, I can do that. But apart from that, that's just a quick one on the vacuum system. Any questions, stick them in the comments. Uh, oh, before I go, it is that pipe is a four millimeter outside diameter. So what I would do is get a four millimeter pipe, and I'll also get four millimeter or three millimeter, three and a half inside diameter rubber tube. Because if you get four millimeter out, outside diameter and four millimeter inside, it's going to fit, but you want it a bit tight on there. So ideally, if you've got a four millimeter, four millimeter outside diameter tube, you want to get like a three and a half millimeter inside diameter vacuum pipe. So when you put it on there, it's good, nice and solid. So cool. Stay tuned for the next one where hopefully we'll have this. A bit of a test drive, maybe.